Hello, this is an orientation to CPRS, the Computerized Patient Record System, geared toward medical students uh, who've not had previous experience with this system. I've already opened up uh, a patient's uh, folder. Uh, this is not a real patient, as you can see in the upper left. It's ZZ Test Dunkin' Donut, but we'll use this as an illustration. As you can see in the lower left-hand portion of the screen, the model here is the old paper tabbed chart where uh, patient's history and records are divided, in this case, into 10 different areas. We're going to go through six of these, starting with our current screen, which is the cover sheet. This, as the name implies, gives you an overview for what's going on with the patient. Uh, starting in the lower middle portion, you'll see the patient's most recent vital signs. And if you want to find out what earlier vital signs were through the evening or late yesterday afternoon, if you left click on any one of them, I'll click on temperature here, uh, you're given both a digital representation of temperature and a graphic representation. And you can adjust the parameters here to go back as far as you'd like. Uh, generally for vital signs, we just like to go back a day or two. But for other parameters like weight, it may be useful to know uh, what the patient's current weight is relative to his or her weight six to 12 months ago, something like that close out this screen now. Other things you'll find on this cover sheet uh, in the upper left-hand corner, these are active problems that somebody has taken the time to enter. So this is not necessarily a complete list. Other things on this screen, upper right, VistaWeb is one of the most useful features of the entire system. I'm going to click on that. This gives you access to all VA records throughout the country. Uh, which, of course, is very useful if your particular patient has been seen at multiple different VAs. You'll just follow the prompts to uh, take you to those sites. I'm going to close this out now. Another useful thing on this screen in the far upper right are postings. These are medication reactions and allergies that uh, the patient has experienced previously. In the upper left-hand corner, with a slight yellowest cast. If you click on the rectangle, that contains the patient's name and social security number and date of birth. A screen will open giving further information about the patient, including their address, their phone number, their next of kin, and their contact information. Looking back at our tabs, I'm gonna skip over problems and go to the medications tab. For an inpatient, inpatient medicines will appear at the top portion of the screen, and there, it will usually appear in alphabetical order. A useful feature here is if you left-click on a medication to highlight it and then right-click on it, you can look at uh, the administration times and dosages of a particular medicine. This would be useful, for example, in a diabetic uh, who is having blood sugar issues. Before one changes the insulin regimen, you'd like to see did the patient, in fact, get his dose and get it at the proper time. Orders, I'll skip notes. This is where you'll spend the majority of your time, both composing your own notes and reading the notes of others. I have my system set by default to give the last 100 signed notes. So the most recent note is at the top, um, then going backwards. You can change that by uh, clicking on View, and uh, you can click All Signed Notes. I would caution you against doing this. Some veterans have records going back to the early 1990s, and you might be sitting there uh, looking at an hourglass for several minutes while the system retrieves those. You usually don't need notes going that far back. But if you know, for example, you want to check notes from a cardiology appointment in 2010, you can drop down to sign notes by date range and put in the date parameters uh, for, for the notes you wish to capture. Another way of doing it is if you're looking for a note written by a specific individual, you can look for signed notes by authors. I think the most useful feature in this entire menu is custom view. And I'm going to use an example. I'm going to look for all notes that contain medicine. And click OK. And then for example, if a patient's on a general medicine service, which this patient had not been, all notes written by medicine individuals will show up bolded, so it makes it much easier to, to see those at a glance. With regard to your own note, 
you'll click on New Note, and I'll click OK, and you're left with a blank screen. So really, your entire narrative is entered by free text. There are ways to import data directly into your note, and many of those are listed under templates. And then I'm going to open up shared templates, and then open up clinical data. So for example, vital signs. Uh, it's useful to put the most recent vital signs in your note. Double-clicking on that will make them appear here. Similarly, uh, it's useful to include uh, medications in your note. This patient doesn't have very many, but that'll show up. Uh, in terms of lab information, there's a couple ways to enter notes. Uh, you can click on these one by one, and it'll populate your note. This patient has a, oh, there he's got a calcium level, oh, high calcium level. Of your uh, history portion, your past medical history, review systems, physical examination, and then certainly your assessment and plan, you're going to have to enter um, via the keyboard and free text. And then you'll sign your note by either uh, right-clicking on it, and you'll have an option to sign, or going up to the Action menu. And uh, you can sign Note now. If you're not quite done, you can save it without signature. When you come back to a save note that has not yet been signed, you won't be able to edit it directly. But if you click on this menu item, Edit Progress Note, then, then you'll be able to modify that note. This was just an example note, so I'm going to, I don't want to save it, so I'm going to delete it. And yes, I do want to delete it. Consult the surgery. I'm going to skip over discharge summaries. This is very helpful on, especially an in inpatient medicine service, where patients tend to get admitted to the hospital for problems similar to what they've had in the past. So it's useful to know what, how was the diagnosis made, what was the treatment, what were the discharge medicines. This particular patient has no discharge summaries in the system. But again, for patients coming in with uh, um, an exacerbation of a chronic problem like heart failure or COPD, uh, discharge summary is very useful place to look. Looking at the labs tab, there's a couple ways to look at labs. The system by default will give you the most recent laboratory value. And then if you click on previous with the single backward arrow, it'll go back one lab or one group of labs at a time. Uh, that, that has some value, uh, but it's rather tedious. I think a better way to do it is under worksheet. You can uh, make test groups. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But these are test groups I've already made. I'm going to click on my test group number one, which is a basic chemistry panel, and then look at this. And th this is a value because not only does it give you today's uh, Chem 7 profile, but it gives you yesterday's and every day's. And this way you can look at trends. So for example, a creatinine value of 1.2 or 1.3 isn't particularly exciting. But if the patient's creatinine yesterday was 0.6, then that's an important trend to note. I'd make a similar comment for hemoglobin, hemoglobin value of 11, not too worrisome in and of itself, but if you look at it this way and you find yesterday's hemoglobin was 15, well, then there's a major problem there and that needs to be addressed. So I would encourage, look, encourage you to look at uh, at least Chem 7 and uh, CBC uh, in, in this worksheet mode. Uh, these are other worksheets I've made which I found helpful. Uh, in addition to those two I just mentioned, um, cardiac enzymes, uh, uh, HIV and CD4, HIV viral load, CD4 count, lipid panel, iron studies, uh, liver function studies, and uh, glucose is particularly useful. A diabetic in the hospital, you want to know what have their numbers been over the last 24, 48 hours. And you can include in this both the glucose values as determined by the labs and uh, the glucose by AccuCheck, that is point of care by a healthcare tech, and you certainly want to look at both sets of numbers. You can make a test group of any uh, collection of labs of seven items or less. So let's start with Chem 7, which you think has seven items, but uh, actually it's got ten items. And so we can't make a test group from this, it's too big. So I'm going to get rid of three items uh, to fit that criterion. So I'm going to remove estimated GFR, even though that's actually desirable. I'm going to remove calculated osmolality, and I'm going to remove anion gap. And when I do that, this grayed out tab is going to turn black. And now I can make a new test group and name it anything I want. I'm not going to do it here since I already have that test group. But uh, that's how one would do it. All right, I'm going to cancel this out. 
and then we're going to go to our final tab, and that's reports, where you'll find uh, x-ray and pathology reports. Uh, x-rays, uh, imaging will give you recent reports, none for this particular uh, Mr. Duncan. But I can explore the whole system if I click on just plain imaging. Then I can set in date parameters, and I'm going to click all results. And uh, Donut has actually had a gastric emptying study. Huh, interesting. And um, so I can pull up the results of that. You, you can copy and paste this into your note uh, using uh, standard keyboard commands. I would encourage you to, rather than copying and pasting a full report, is uh, either summarize it in your own words or just copy and pasting the highlights of the report uh, to keep your note at a reasonable length. For uh, looking at path results, uh, I explode uh, anatomic pathology and pull up search path. This patient has not had any specimens. And there's some other useful things in this column, particularly under clinical reports. I, I find myself going to the pharmacy tab a lot, and then all outpatients. This is where you can find out when was a particular medication uh, prescribed for a patient, when was it stopped, and then you can explore why was it stopped, did it just fall off the person's list, did some practitioner actually want to discontinue that. And you can find those things by exploring uh, this particular uh, sub-tab of all outpatient under pharmacy. The other thing that's useful in reports is immunizations. Certainly you want to keep a patient up to date with their pneumococcal vaccine, for example, but if they don't remember if they had one, you can look here and see if they've had one. It's desirable to look at chest x-rays and electrocardiograms in your patients. You can do that from any terminal by under tools, going to Vista Imaging. And it looks like, yeah, this patient, uh, Mr. Donut, does not have any ECGs on file, but they would appear here. And certainly that's useful for comparing the current electrocardiogram uh, to previous ones. But this is also where you'll find um, chest x-ray images. Um, under library is where you can go directly to up-to-date from within the system. The help menu I find indeed very helpful. And, and if you want to find out more about any particular tab in greater detail, that would be the place. All right. With that, we'll stop and uh, go get them.